Hello everyone, so what I have here is my first attempt at a Fedback linear actuator. So here we have a 500 kilo ohm slide pop connected by this wire. It's thick, it's solid core, uh, and it's connected up to here. So I've probably got it wired as a normal potentiometer. Got the power supply here, and it's connected on my oscilloscope here. So if I just place this somewhere you can see. As you can see, the pot follows the position and we can reverse it too. So all that I've done here really is super glue this pot on here um, and connect it with this solid wire. <laughs> it's pretty simple to be honest with you. It's kind of annoying though because I originally bought some different pots and they come from China. So here were the original ones I bought. You know, standard slide pots and they even have this nice felt thing that stops dust getting in. But these were advertised at I think 52 millimeters of travel or something and they're not. They're advertised as that, but they are nowhere near that much travel. So this one is advertised at 60 millimeters, and just placing them next to each other, you can see like they're not the right size. So this one, unfortunately, didn't cover the full distance, and I'd already bought 12 of these, so that was a little more annoying. But otherwise, this is fine. I've got some more of these coming. Hey everyone. So what we've got here is a L293D. And that is a half bridge driving my linear actuator with the pot attached. And I have written a very small program that allows for closed loop control. So this is STM Studio. And up here, I can say what position I want it to be in. So if I say 1000, for example, you'll be able to see this starts to move. It will get to a position and stop. And as we can see here, the position and current position are the same. So if I set this down to 500, you can watch on here, the reference has gone down and the current position meets the reference eventually. If I go back up to 1000 again, the actuator meets the reference eventually. And this is a really simple controller, it's just a what is known as a bang bang controller with a hysteresis of 10 and it's linearized to a 10-bit scale so 1024 is the maximum that can be moved to there we go as you can see and obviously zero is then the minimum now this kind of controller has plus or minus a few um, well I guess bits of error due to the hysteresis so if I go for a position of 500 We are currently at the midpoint of our scale, but if I set the hysteresis down to 2 instead of 10, we get this kind of horrible sound here. And if I just give it a bit of a bit of a nudge, we get these oscillations. So if I change it to a new reference, let's say 800, we can see here that it will move to the position, but it'll oscillate around the point. Let's go down to 200. And you can hear it oscillating as well. So yeah, that's that horrible grumbling sound. And if I set the history to something minimal, for example zero, it gets much worse, and you end up getting this continuous oscillation, which isn't that good. So if I now increase the position to 800, you might even be able to see the oscillation on here. the scale. There you go. Very slightly see. Whereas if I set the hysteresis to say uh, 6, that completely dies out. So this control loop is currently running at a delay of 2 milliseconds after every positional move, which translates to an a closed loop frequency of 500 Hz. 
Hi everyone, so what we've got here is a proportional and derivative controller with a non-linear control element. Uh, this is an L293D controlling my linear actuator again and I've still got the same kind of arm set up there. Uh, this is just STM Studio running. So here if I put in a new positional demand, you can see we approach it and we stop right on it. If we go back down to 100. And this control loop is running at 125 hertz. It's software generated PWM as opposed to hardware generated. And yeah, it seems to work fine. So I'm probably going to go for this kind of controller in the final.